Hey everyone, Catch em All Collectibles here. In today's video, I am going to ruffle some feathers. Uh, there was a live stream, multiple live streams, I've mentioned the thought that PSA 10s may be seen as participation trophies. Essentially, there are some cards that grade at such a high 10 rate. It's essentially meaningless. The only thing it means is that you decided to send that card into PSA. Uh, modern printing quality on certain cards in certain sets is so high that a 10 just becomes meaningless at PSA because they grade too easy. And in this video, I'm going to break down just one ultra modern example of a pretty bulletproof card, a card that grades very, very high and show you CGC versus PSA versus BGS. And I'm going to talk about the future potential PSA might have of having to reckon with this issue that almost every card is just a PSA 10 in certain instances. Before people jump on me, feel free to jump on me in the comments though. Let me know what you think. Uh, by no means am I calling uh, Neo Genesis Slow King a participation trophy PSA 10. By no means am I calling a mid-era vintage, even, even some newer sets. I mean, Gold Star Greninja, that is not our participation trophy level 10 because I mean, I have hundreds myself. I pre-graded across probably 50 of them to grab five to grade, and I got like one or two tens on my most recent batch. So some cards, PSA's 10 is difficult enough due to the inherent poor uh, production standards. And, and we've been seeing it more. Is Pokemon doing this? I mean, I, I don't have a tin foil, f tin foil fedora like Cardinal Gaming does, but if I did, I'd pop it on. Is Pokemon or are some of these manufacturers intentionally lower in condition so that there's some kind of a chase, some kind of an exclusivity to the higher quality cards. I don't think that's the case. I think they're just making so much money, churning out so much product that they don't need to care for quality because the consumers are still buying it faster than they, than they can produce it. I think that's the most reasonable. That, that is our o Occam's Razor outcome. So anyways, let's get right into it. We have an EV PSA 10 Nagaba. And... I sold three copies so far at 70 bucks. So let's look at the, the pop report for this as well. So EVU Nagaba, 1148. Sorry, you actually can't see this right now. So 1148 out of the 1,319 graded have graded PSA 10. That is nearly, I mean, that, that rounds to a 90% 10 rate. I think it's like 87% or so. Same thing goes for a lot of the U Nagaba evolutions. And there's a lot of promos out there like this. I'm not going to name them all. If, if you step into the paywall, the Patreon, we probably openly talk about more of them. But there are a handful. There are a handful that I talk about kind of in the public domain for, for plays that can be spilled. Nagaba Evolutions are on everyone's radar. The 001 SVP, the Celebrations Charizard. Celebrations Charizard is nowhere near 90%. And you need to do more pre-grading with the Celebrations Charizard than you do with the Nagabas or with the 001 SVPs. But you still need to do a little bit of pre-grading. That said, though, when... Such a high rate are getting 10s. It's just a participation trophy, in my opinion. I can't believe, and, and honestly, uh, I can't believe they're selling for 70 right now. They're struggling to do that mightily. I, I mean, I want to say there's been some auctions, maybe of the lesser, the lesser um, popular evolution species. They've been getting in the 40s. They've been getting in the 40s at auction. So, uh, yeah. Now, CGC, on the other hand... Pristine 10, the new highest grade, I, I think CGC did themselves and did the customer a big disservice, personally, when they dropped the perfect branding of the top grade. I really wish they had still had the perfect branding, and you'll see why when I show you the Beckett black label results. But uh, one thing that CGC is doing, wrong pop report, CGC, Pristine 10, less than half, about 50%, let's say, about 50% of cards that are being graded. And, and again... You can't blindly send and expect to get this. You can't blindly send and expect to get 90%. Open your eyes. Look at them for at least five seconds, just like the PSA graders do, the BGS, the CGC graders do. Pre-grade them for five seconds before the grader grades them for five seconds and ensure you're not sending one with like major issues. But overall, you can, you can reasonably expect with light pre-grading to get 90% PSA 10s and then sell for it, sell it for 70 bucks. I mean, they're selling slowly for 70 bucks. I would expect... By the end of summer, I truly expect these to be $40 PSA 10s. The packs right now are somewhere between $15 and $25. I haven't paid close atten attention recently. The grading takes three months and costs $15. But uh, yeah, I mean, look, look at this copy right here. This is how easy PSA grades. 
Look at how thin that left is, how thick that right is. I think a lot of people grade harsher. They pre-grade themselves harsher than PSA grades. And th this is one thing that I've heard people say. I've heard people say people send the best of the best cards to PSA. I send the worst of the worst. I, I mean, I don't send ones that I know will be nines, but I send my better ones. I actually send my better ones, like with Nagaba Evolutions. I had I had 100 of each card. I had 100 plus EVs, 100 plus Espeons, 100 plus Umbreons, maybe a little bit less on the Umbreons because they got mapped. But I sent my... My best of the best to BGS and CGC because I know they grade harder. I sent my easy ones. If they were off center at all, they went to PSA because they give tens easily, even on off center cards. I mean, you can't get crazy with it. Again, it's not actually free tens, but it's it's as close to a participation trophy as you can get out of the three main graders for Pokemon. So continuing on, I don't like how eBay does this, but this is an actual sold listing. Uh it did not sell for 618. If you look on eBay, it looks as if it does. A person messaged me saying, hey, will you take 500? I said yes, and I sent them the offer for 500. They accepted and paid. So this actually sold for 500, but you can see where the market clearly, I'm, one thing I'm not getting into in this video is how replicable and how real these grades are. That's a different conversation entirely. A lot of people probably know my opinion on that, but only 11.4% of EVs, 10 out of 88 so far, have gotten black labels. Clearly the market cares about having a more exclusive grade and PSA just doesn't offer it. I mean, CGC is barely offering it anymore. Unfortunately, I mean, there are 16 perfect 10 Nagaba EVs out there, but there will never be another one. I can't like, I, I'm so bummed. One as a, as a seller, I'm bummed that CGC took away that moonshot, uh, moonshot opportunity to sell the perfect tens. And then two, like as a consumer, if you're actually seeking, barring how replicable replicable it may or may not be barring how valid the measurement might be if you're seeking to get a top 10 percentile 20 percentile card psa just doesn't do it for you they they give the trophy they give the 10 to everyone who submits to them within reason 90 percent um so yeah i think i genuinely think that in the coming it won't be months but in the coming years PSA will have to reckon with this uh, unless, unless Scarlet and Violet and, and 151 print qu quality is signs of things to come because Japanese used to always be Japanese new back. Oh, close your eyes and send it and you'll get a 10 almost every time. That's not the case anymore. I mean, 151, I heard a lot of people had to do a lot of pre-grading uh, Ruler of the Black Flame. I, I heard of people buying many dozens of copies of the same card and only having three or four or five to send off. So if and when Pokemon print quality... If, if the consumer accepts it and Pokemon doesn't care to spend the extra money to print higher quality cards, maybe it will sort itself out. M maybe PSA, maybe Nat is calling up Pokemon. Maybe Nat is calling up Panini and, and well, Fanatics now. Maybe maybe he's saying, hey guys, we're giving out too many 10s. Our, our, our grading standards are too lax. We need you to produce some worse quality cards so that uh, not everything is a 10. We, we need to stop being seen and branded as a participation trophy. Because again, on, on the Nagabas, PSA 10 is a participation trophy and the market, I, I, I expect by the end of this year, I mean, we're going into fall soon now, I expect those things to be selling at auction and I could be completely wrong. I'm one guy with one crazy set of opinions and, and thoughts, but uh, when 90% of them, when, when everything is special, nothing is special. When, when everyone's super, nobody's super, right? Uh, the, the Incredibles quote there. So I... I the, the next thing is, so I see an issue with PSA and I see that their kind of card condition is too high and everything's getting a 10. The, the average consumer, I don't think cares that much. And I think the average consumer just wants big number, bigger money. But across years and years and years, I, I do think you'll see more and more of an issue. I mean, there, there, there's some historical precedent too for cards that really just tanked because they got way overgraded and all of them were 10s, Illustration Charizard and... There's a bunch of other ones out there. I mean, 001 SVP is actually holding up better than I would have expected, given how easy it is to grade. And I mean, the PSA 10 prices are actually popping up a little bit. But yeah, anyways, continuing on, what could PSA potentially do? I mean, CGC, man, they just have to go back two months, whenever that was, and they need to do everything they did except dropping the perfect. Keep the perfect. So perfect 10 it is, is the best of the best, grade it very hard as they did. And then pristine 10, and then get rid of the gem mint 10. J just, just make, keep the top one as difficult as it was to get perfect 10, and then pristine 10, and then 
get rid of the half grades, mint nine and on down. Uh, clearly, I, I think I think they I think they are better off than they were had they not changed at all. But there's a lot better ways they could have changed. Again, my opinion, BGS though, BGS is the best grading scale to tackle this situation. Again, I don't really believe in their ability. I don't really believe in the validity of the black label grade but it doesn't seem to matter. Maybe someday there will be a day of reckoning for that where the consumer gets wind of the fact that like black label is not a replicable grade in many instances. On average, I would say the average black label is higher condition than the average BGS 10. But if you crack out a thousand of them at random and then regrade them, it's going to be poor, poor replicability. I, I would assume no one's crazy enough to try it though. So we'll never find out, which is great, great for them. But anyways, one thing that I think PSA could do and th this is like, if they were to do it incorrectly, it would be one of the biggest gaffes by any business in the history of man. Uh, a premium 10. No, I'm not saying to make a premium 10 for all cards across the whole scale. They've graded 40, 50 million cards by now, but they're grading 10 million more a year into the future. And disproportionately, they are grading heavily ultra modern cards. And I know that this is a thing in some instances with sports, what I propose and what I think they actually like, I genuinely think there's a, there's a 50% chance they'll be doing this within two or three years, M maybe five years. <laughs> uh, and let me know your thoughts in the comments, but I could see maybe, maybe 2025, maybe, maybe 2030, maybe it takes several years to get there. 2030, they come out with a new thing. Hey, we're not going to go back in time. And we're, we're not going to take old cards and apply them to this standard, but for ultra modern only. So maybe they do 2025 to current. Maybe they do 2023 to current. Maybe they pick a number a few years back. But for those years, there will be an Onyx label PSA 10. There will be a premium PSA 10. And that would allow them to not just give 90% 10 rates. That would allow them to do like, hey, 10% of the cards are going to get this exclusive, kind of like the MBA sticker, kind of like whatever these different third-party secondary authenticators are doing to show you the best of the best. If PSA were to do that, I think if, if they were to do that universally and say that all your gem mint 10 Watsies, all your gem mint 10 Fleer 86 rookies, all your gem mint 10, that, that would be the worst business decision ever made. But if they did it for ultra modern only, like I think there's actually precedent for this. I, I don't know if PCGS does it, who is PCGS is the coin equivalent of PSA. They are under the collector's holdings umbrella. NGC, I'm pretty sure does. And I don't know how it's working out. Maybe the market's rejecting it and maybe I'm crazy for even proposing this. But I, I know that uh, NGC for coins offers like a slightly different grading scale. They, they offer almost like a card grading scale for ultra modern coins only. They don't do it on vintage coins. It, it's a certain year ahead as far as I understand. So yeah, I, I would not be shocked if someday the market kind of rejects the participation trophy. If the, if the market rejects 10 rates above 50, 60, 80, 90, 95% and forces PSA into offering a more premium option, a, a premium 10 of some kind, a PSA 11, whatever, you, whatever they want to call it, I think they would need to be very cautious with it. And I think they would be best to say that any card created before X year, 2025 maybe, any card created before 2025 cannot get it. Because the last thing you want to do, the last thing you want to do is piss off. I mean, 42% of Pokemon cards graded, somewhere around there, 42% of Pokemon cards graded have achieved a gem mint 10. You don't want to tell millions of people that their card isn't the best anymore. You don't want to create. So here's all the 10s. You don't want to say, you need to pay us more money to, to find out if your card is this 11. Your card was produced before 2025, so it is a 10, and that is the most it can get. There is risk, there is damaging, this is kind of like, there is risk for damage, there is risk for uh, consumer mistrust, whatever it may be, and maybe I'm way out there. Maybe this is a crazy, crazy, maybe Dan's worst idea ever. But yeah, let me know in the comments. I, I, I truly think, uh, I mean, look at, what, look at what the black label, you, you can't argue with numbers, right? You can't argue with actual completed sales. Literally, the market values the black label. Is it just because it looks cool? The nice black label, cool. Is it just the branding? Is that going to go away? Or is it actually something? I, I know Perfects only had a short window, but uh, they were selling really well. They, they were selling significantly above uh, 
PSA 10s and such. So yeah, let me know your thoughts below. I, I figured I'd make a little different kind of a video here. I actually recorded this the same day, the same day that I recorded my uh, my follow up on the 100K a year that, that I did last week. So yeah, that's my video for today. Let me know in the comments below if I'm crazy or not. I appreciate everyone watching as always. I will catch you all later.